Today I'm going to be fixing a mold that had a few problems. Welcome to another episode. In a previous episode, link below, I made the mold halves for a speaker enclosure. One of the problems that I had is that I made some mistakes making the mold. The pins were not exactly round, and I cut the corner where I shouldn't have on one side, which resulted in some flash that had to be trimmed off by hand. So I wanted to remake the mold half. And the first thing I want to do is show you what the issue is, and then I'm going to make the mold half and see if that fixes the issues. When I took a closer look at the part, I noticed that the circular holes were not circular. When I looked at the mold, I could see that, in fact, the parts in the mold were not round either. So that means I must have made a mistake when I was making the mold, and the easiest solution is to just make a new mold half. Right now there's a tiny burr wherever the aluminum is near the top. So there's a burr along here, there's a burr along here, and I can feel it. What I want to do is just knock that burr off because the burr is going to trap the plastic a little bit and make it harder to remove the plastic from the core. I have a piece of sandpaper here. It's, as you can see, 400 grit. So I'm just going to put this down flat on top and just ever so gently sand it a little bit and I can feel when the burrs are gone. Okay, so I think the, the burrs are gone. I'm going to have a close-up look. That feels pretty good, but I'll find out by looking under a microscope. Now I'm going to just sand a little bit along these edges. And again, that little bit of sanding will help get rid of the burr on the top. Now I could use a deburring tool on these, which would be fine for here, but not up here. The deburring tool here, of course, would uh, create a little bit of a ch uh, ch chamfer but there isn't going to be any plastic along where I have the ring, so that's actually fine. Anyway, that's, that's uh, I can already feel the difference. That's probably enough right there. And now I'm going to uh, take it in and give it a try and see how it works in the injection mold. All right, I have this all set up. So I'm uh, going to engage the clamp and then uh, run the cycle. So the first uh, cycle often leaves a little bit of uh, metal embedded in the part. Uh, so there's some shavings that I didn't get out. But the thing that I really like about this 
is that uh, the circles are perfectly round and the correct size this time. So, and there's no flash around it. So it's a perfect part. So I'll make a few more, get rid of the, uh, the metal, and then it should be good. So there's a uh, little bit of flash along here. What that means is I want to reduce the uh, injection pressure a little bit or increase the clamping force. So I'm going to decrease the uh, injection pressure a little bit. This is the clamping force back here. It's already at 110, 120 PSI. This is the injection pressure, which is about 70. So I'm going to drop it down a little bit. And it doesn't really leak very quickly, so this won't really show up until I do the next cycle. But I'll, I'll keep it on there so that you can see what happens when I do the, uh, the next cycle. And no flash, so it turned out perfectly. So I'm going to keep doing, oh yeah, and then I have a counter here that I use to keep track of how many I've made. This side-by-side -side view shows just how much of a difference there is between the old Moltaf and the new Moltaf. With the new Moltaf, you can see that the holes are perfectly round. So I'm very happy with this, and now I can go into production. Remaking the Moltaf was a lot of fun because I'm using my upgraded TIG with the TTS collets and the power draw bar. That made changing tools a whole lot nicer. Also, the tool offsets were already in there, so that made that a lot nicer as well. Just a pleasure to work with. Now, in the previous episode, some people, I, or maybe it was on Facebook, I don't remember which, some people were saying that the problems I had with the pins not being round were probably a result of backlash or lost motion on my machine. I didn't think that was the case. I was pretty sure I had made mistakes, but I wasn't 100% sure. I think it's pretty clear that there were no problems at all with the machine. It was entirely my mistakes that created the issue because now the final mold is perfect. The pins are completely round, the flash issue is gone, and I can make perfect parts. So as I mentioned, the next step is production and then I'll be done. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Please subscribe, give me a thumbs up, and give me comments uh, if you have any and I'll answer them. Thanks. See you next time.